Hello, I'm Pratik Kalakutla, and today I'm going to be discussing a new form of metal sensing, or mercury sensing, for rural communities. First, the problem. Mercury concentrations in rural communities have been skyrocketing due to a new form of gold mining known as artisanal small-scale gold mining, or ASGM. ASGM miners use mercury as a way to separate gold from gold ore. However, these miners can't control the vapors this process produces. These vapors get into local water sources, summarily poisoning villagers who have no way of protecting themselves. Mercury poisoning has been known to cause renal failure, neural degeneration, and in many cases, death. There are currently 15 million ASGM miners, and they affect hundreds of millions of rural villagers. As a result, it is imperative that we find a way to reduce the amount of damage these ASGM miners can do in these rural villages. One of the most effective ways to do this will be to give these villagers a way to tell whether or not their water is contaminated. However, this isn't as simple as it seems. There are two main mercury sensors on the market today, the CVAAS and Gold's nanoparticle sensors. Both of these sensors have limitations when dealing with low concentrations of mercury in rural communities. The CVAAS can sense extremely low concentrations of mercury and is used widely by the EPA. However, it is also extremely expensive. One instrument can cost nearly $10,000, a sum that a rural community simply cannot afford. Gold nanoparticle sensors, on the other hand, are lower cost and can sense these low concentrations of mercury. However, they are non-reusable and non-portable in most cases. Luminescent systems seem to be the best way forward. Not only are they more portable and easier to use, they tend to be lower cost than the other systems. My system's luminescence is born out of its gold gold interactions, otherwise known as aerophilic interactions. To understand these interactions, one must first understand my molecule's geometry and aqueous solution. There are two main parts, the ligand and the gold center. When these two things combine, they form a trimer or triangular structure, as seen on the right. When two trimers come together, they stack, forming what is known as a dimer of trimers. This dimer of trimers is the foundation of my system's luminescence, as well as its metal sensing capabilities. There are two main ways by which the system can sense metals. The first is known as sandwiching. In this method, a metal titrated into the system inserts itself between the two trimer layers, thus drastically changing the length of the aerophilic interactions and the system's luminescence. It changes it by changing the color of the system's luminescence, as well as increasing the overall intensity. The other main way is known as conjugation. In this method, the metal titrate into the system interacts with the polar groups on the ligand. This causes a change in molecular geometry, which in turn severs the gold-gold interactions, lowering the overall emission of the system. By correlating these changes in emission intensity with changes in concentration of metal, we are able to sense each of these metals. In both sandwiching and conjugation, the ligand plays a large role in determining which metals the system can and can't sense. I hypothesized that a 3-amino, 1,2,4-triazole-5-carboxylic acid ligand could be used to sense divalent ions such as mercury. My hypothesis was based on previous work done in my lab. We had already shown that a triazole bound to these gold centers could form a luminescent system in the solid state. We had also shown that a pyrazole with one polar group could form a system that could sense monovalent metals with a low charge density, such as silver. I hypothesized that a tri a tri my triazole would be able to sense divalent metals with a higher charge density because of its three uncoordinated polar groups. These three uncoordinated polar groups would create a region of high negative charge, which I believe would interact more readily with these divalent ions. One of the best parts about my system and one of the reasons I believe it will be so effective in these rural communities is because of its ease of synthesis and its low cost. All one needs to synthesize the system are three components. A triazole, a gold precursor, in this case gold THT chloride, and a polar solvent. When these three things are combined and allowed to stir for about an hour, we form a green emissive system, this metal sensing system. A quick economic analysis demonstrates that the cost of the synthesis of the system in each sensor is only 72 cents, 13 times lower than the 13,000 times lower than the cost of the CVAAS, currently used by the EPA for mercury sensing. We are able to keep the cost low by using small concentrations of each component. While there is a gold component which would usually bring the cost up, 
because we only use 21.2 milligrams, the system remains affordable to these rural residents who really need it the most. Additionally, the ease of synthesis means the system can be mass produced in a factory setting, thus allowing for easier proliferation into these rural communities. The first thing I needed to do was to make sure that my system was in fact sensitive to mercury. In order to do this, I titrated small concentrations of mercury into the system and then checked for changes in luminescence. I found that as I added more and more mercury to the system, the system's luminescence became more and more dim until it was no longer luminescent. This not only demonstrated to me that the system was interfacting with these divalent metal ions, it also demonstrated to me how it was interacting with these ions. The next thing I needed to do was to find out what other metals the system could and couldn't sense. In order to do this, I needed to set a sensing threshold. I set it at a 3% change in emission, as the system's emission naturally varied by about plus or minus 2%. I then tested representative metals from across the periodic table and found only four that the system could sense. These four were zinc, copper, lead, and europium. All four of these metals fit my original hypothesis, as all four of them are divalent ions with a, lower, a higher charge density than that of silver. Additionally, this demonstrated to me that the system was especially sensitive to mercury, as the mercury sensitivity was far higher than that of any of the other metals. In many rural communities, the water isn't just contaminated with mercury. It's also contaminated with things like copper and lead. To make sure that these other contaminants wouldn't affect my system's ability to sense mercury, I titrated them into separate systems and then tested all of these new systems, um, mercury sensitivities, with the mercury sensitivity of a control system. I found that across the bo board, the mercury sensitivities were relatively similar, allowing me to confidently state that the system could sense dangerous concentrations even in contaminated settings. One of the biggest problems that I faced was getting my system to sense dangerous concentrations of mercury. In the beginning, even with an optimized synthesis, the, synthes the sy system could only sense up to 20 ppm of mercury. While this may seem low, the minimum concentration of mercury necessary to cause damage to the human body is only 3 ppm, well below what my system could sense. I came to realize the system had such poor mercury sensitivity because the water solvent wasn't doing enough to stabilize the notoriously unstable gold-1 ions. These ions were decomposing before they could even bind to the ligand, thus reducing my overall dimer yield and leaving the mercury nowhere to interact with. My lab had shown that polymers, such as chitazan, could be used to increase the stability of the gold, thereby increasing the dimer yield. However, I was reluctant to use chitazan as a matrix because chitazan is a known chelating agent. A chelating agent is simply a molecule that binds strongly to metals. I was reluctant because I believed that the chitazan would bind to the mercury before my system could, thus making the system's mercury sensitivity even worse. In order to circumvent this problem, I decided to stabilize my system in chitazan and then dilute it in water. By stabilizing in chitazan, I greatly increased its overall dimer yield. Then, by diluting it in water, I reduced the chelation of the, mercury, of the chitazan, thus making it easier for the mercury to reach the system. With this new synthesis, I was able to get the system's minimum sensitivity of mercury down to 0.3 ppm, well below the dangerous concentration limit of mercury. Additionally, the overall sensing range of the system fell between 0.3 ppm and 300 ppm. This falls well within the dangerous concentration range of mercury, and thus shows me that the system could be used to alert people to dangerous concentrations of mercury in their water sources. I tried different dilutions of the, of the system, one to four, one part system, four parts water, as well as a one to three dilution and a one to two dilution, and found that across the board, these dilutions had similar mercury sensitivities. I decided to stick to the one to three dilution just because it was the easiest to make and it was the most stable over time. Finally, I needed to induce reversibility. Reversibility, in my case, is just the ability to sense mercury after the initial addition of mercury. In other words, reusability. I decided to use EDTA, I decided to use a strong chelating agent to, I believe that a strong chelating agent would be able to help me induce this reversibility, as I believe that the strong chelating agent would bind to the mercury, thus removing it from the system and allowing the gold's gold interactions to reform. This would then allow the system to sense a new concentration of mercury. I decided on EDTA as my chelating agent because EDTA is, has a strong affinity for mercury and does not have any of its own metal groups, which would have interacted with the system and thus changed the mercury sensitivity. I came to realize the most effective way to add the EDTA would be to add specific concentrations which bound to as much mercury as possible without going into excess. I was able to find these concentrations for 70 ppm of mercury 
and 30 ppm of mercury. And I'm looking to create a complete calibration curve for all concentrations of mercury. In conclusion, I've developed a system that can sense mercury at concentrations between 0.3 ppm and 300 ppm, well within the dangerous concentration range of mercury. It's high utility, low cost, easy to use, easy to make, and reversible, thus revolutionizing mercury sensing in these rural communities. I've applied to patent the system synthesis. I hope to have, the, I hope to have this patent done by March of next year. While the system is effective in its current state, there are still some things I want to do to make it even better. I want to increase the minimum sensitivity to mercury so it can be used as a mercury sensor within the human body. I want to find the best dilution of chitosan, which has the most stability while having the least chelating properties. I want to find out if the system is still sensitive in the solid state so that it can be used more effectively in fiber optic sensors. And I want to complete biological tests to make sure that the system doesn't hurt the people it is meant to help. I would like to thank the Siemens Foundation for all this, all this, um, all this time and all this um, ch a chance to give, to give my presentation. And I'd like to thank my, the Omari group for helping me realize this goal. I'd also like to thank everyone here for listening. Thank you. <laughs>